You know, I don't think I've ever met anybody who doesn't like whales. I mean, it's not that I often just talk to people and start asking them whether they like whales, but I mean, how can you not love those gentle giants of the sea who even communicate in song? They're just so innocent and sweet, and seeing one stranded on a beach is always such a stark and upsetting reminder of what we're doing to their environment. But I mean, you can't ignore a whale, especially when it's stranded. They're the metaphorical elephant in the room, only far, far bigger. I think that's why the environmentalist movement has often focused on them as a rallying cry, such as in the Save the Whales movement. You can't ignore a whale. Similarly, it's hard to ignore whales or the environment when you're talking about Gojira, such as the meme status in the metal community about one of their best songs, Flying Whales, from the album From Mars to Sirius, which is further solidified with the band's clear commitment to environmentalism on the same album with the brilliant Global Warming. But their last album, 2016's Magma, was focused on something quite different for the most part. It was intrinsically linked and imbued with grief. The grief that the Plantier brothers had after losing their mother whilst writing the album. And Fortitude. Fortitude, I think, is also an album that comes from a place of grief. But not from someone's death, but rather ecological grief. A psychological response to the destruction of the environment. Fortitude sees Joe calling for social change, singing of the destruction of the Amazon rainforest in Amazonia with the lyrics, the greatest miracle is burning to the ground, or wanting to escape this planet completely in another world, but... There is no planet B or calling us into action with Into the Storm with its chorus, you're awake now, put your fist in the air. But regardless of the themes, the conversation surrounding Fortitude is always going to circle back in some way to whether their last album, Magma, was good or not. Because like Opeth, Mastodon, Olver, and many, many other bands before them from the metal scene, Gojira have gotten a lot less heavy over the years. They started their career as Chuck Schulten, the worshipping deaf wannabes, but over 20 years later, they have lost a lot of that heaviness that you find in tunes like Backbone or Toxic Garbage Island. Magma it was quite an accessible album. Silvera and Stranded were really big singles for the band and helped increase their audience dramatically. They went from underground heroes to mainstream metal icons. And it wasn't overnight. I mean, Lon Fance and Savage had put down some of the groundwork and they'd been steadily gaining an audience for a long time. But the transition was starker with Magma and this was hard for a lot of fans to take in, especially those who were loyal from the earlier tech death days. Me, well, I got into Gojira a little later than many others. I got in with L'Enfant de Savage around 2012. And Magma, as a result, was an album that I found to be brilliant at first when it came out in 2016. It was my 10th favourite album of 2016, and I just loved it. I couldn't stop listening to it. But over the years, I've certainly found myself going back to it less and less. It's simplistic riffs, it's overuse of wah wah wee woo. It just makes it less compelling to me than an album like From Mars to Sirius, which has just which my love has just grown for over the years tremendously. I mean, I get why people think Magma bad and hate the direction the band has gone in. And if you're staunchly opposed to Magma, well, you're probably not going to like Fortitude that much, I'm afraid. It's not exactly a return to terror incognito, as you see some very small segment of the fan base start to call for. But there are a couple of songs, even as an old school Gojira fan you may like, Grind and Sphinx, but we'll get to those in a little bit. But yeah, it's important to just put it out there. I, th I think Magma good. A little undercooked, underdeveloped definitely, relying on more formulaic songwriting, overly simplistic riffs at the expense of the great crushing atmospheres and immersive tunes which Gojira had crafted before. But if someone puts on Silvera, I'm always going to start headbanging. And if you like me, and you like, but maybe don't love Magma anymore, um, Fortitude. Fortitude is going to be an interesting one, so let's get into it. This album just starts brilliantly. While I wasn't overly enthralled with Born For One Thing, the opener and one of the lead singles of the album, when first listening to the video on my phone speakers when it came out, hearing it with headphones, listening to Fortitude in full for the first time, I was just 
blown away. The verse is fast and crushing, with Mario providing some really great rhythms, a lot more so than the other single, Another World, which we'll get to later. Behind Joe and Christian's guitar, the chorus then grows from this heaviness into something really atmospheric and immersive. It's like the song baptizes you into the album, dunking you into the water and then violently lifting you out as it returns to some brilliantly technical riffage. Ending with a mighty breakdown, this song just left me breathless. So it was a good job that Amazonia as track two came in a little bit slower with this album's equivalent of the <laughs> sound. Instead we've got the boing of a traditional South American instrument. And it's a clear ode to Brazil's probably greatest metal export, Sepultura, especially their Roots era. But Gojira really put a very clear take on it. This isn't just Sepultura worship. Joe's sounding angrier and more passionate than he has in quite a long time, as he does seem very passionate about the cause of the Amazon rainforest, which is good, it's very important. And this song is just wildly different to anything else in their catalogue, and anything I've heard in metal for quite a while. It's, it's a wild ride, and I think it works a lot better after the song um, Born For One Thing than maybe it did as a standalone single. And after this one-two punch, they deliver the knockout blow that is Another World. Initially, some fans found this to be a little bit more simplistic, maybe this would harken Magma 2. In fact, when it came out, God, last year, I think. I, it's not a song I've really returned to after the first couple of listens. But hearing it in the context, going from the depths of the rainforest to the depths of space with another world, it's a bit clear why it was released as a lead single and a long time before the album came out. This is a big arena filling tune. It's the kind of thing that Alter Bridge try and write. Um, in terms of how anthemic it is and how sensual the chorus is, though, I mean, it really doesn't sound much like Alter Bridge. I mean, it's, it may be just best for me to abandon that comparison, to be honest. But it weirdly does sound strange like Muse after the halfway point. Yes, I know, comparing Gojira to both Alter Bridge and Muse, my credibility has gone down to absolute zero. But, but bear with me, this is like good Muse like Absolution Muse or Knights of Sidonia Muse, as high-pitched guitars scream in a soundscape while Joe sings sounds rather than words. And just tell me that you couldn't imagine Matt Bellamy's falsetto over that. Okay, maybe that's just me, but this song still kicks ass. It does have a core accessibility and simplicity more akin to some of the material on Magma, but yet it just sounds more refined and developed. It's richer and fuller. It is, it's just a good metal song. And Fortitude does contain a lot of great tunes for a variety of different Gojira fans. I think Gojira have found a better balance on Fortitude than they did on Magma. I don't think this album is going to be quite as polarising as Magma was. And they do seem to be stretching themselves here, whether that's even including some guitar solos on a couple of songs. Yes, Gojira doing guitar solos. And there's a song on here which is a really great example of a bridge between some of the accessibility of Magma, but some more of the structural complexity that maybe you got in Lon Farns and earlier albums. Uh, the standout track, New Found. It's like a combination between Mastodon's Once More Around the Sun, melodically, and some Lon Font style kind of riffage. It's definitely more Magma than it is from, than it is from Mars, but it's just got such a big dramatic sound to it. And when you think that it's peaked around the four minute mark and you think it pretty much has ended, suddenly it comes in with this heavy ass meaty breakdown riff and it's just bliss. But on the other end of the spectrum, you have got some more extreme songs on this album. And I'm certainly not gonna call Fortitude an extreme metal album. It isn't really an extreme metal album, but it does have elements of it, which is nice to see return to Gojira. You've got songs like Sphinx, which features Joe actually growling, which that's a really nice touch. And then you've got the album closer, which I just have to talk about, called Grind. That song is just face-meltingly good. Harsher vocals, heavier riffs than pretty much anything on this album. It's closer to Toxic Garbage Island, if I was going to have to make a comparison, certainly than the catchy hook of Stranded or something. These crushing moments, though, are also punctuated with moments of serenity, blended just beautifully and subtly. It goes from heavy, heavy riffs into a definitely a lighter course. It's a really rich and textured song that's often driven more by Jean-Michel's 
bass lines, which is a bit of a surprise. And then it is by Joan Christian's guitars. It hits you in the face in one moment and, and then just caresses you gently in another. We've got to get to the most divisive song, or two songs, I guess, of this album, though. That's the double whammy, Fortitude, the title track, and The Chant. This is the Marmite moment of the album, and it's probably the first song that you would ask another Gojira fan what they thought of. Fortitude is this two-minute kind of introduction song, just setting the ambience and tone for the chant over some quiet instrumentation and drums, which are closer, I guess, to world music than they are to blast beats. And then the chant comes in from that, and it's a slow, it's described by Joe in an interview, I think, as a healing song. And the guitars have more of a crunch to them. It's more akin to stoner rock, tonally. And uh, it's very cleanly sung with, and the chorus, well, unsurprisingly, it primarily features a chant. This is, I guess, where it gets divisive. Some like the distinct groove of the song, and others just find it dull. Me, I, I'm in the latter camp. I find this song really quite dull, and definitely a low point on the album. Maybe that's just due to my historic dislike of having too many oohs and ahs and those kind of wordless vocals. They can be effective in small doses, but I don't know, when you listen to a lot of albums, it can just start to grate on you after a while. It just comes across as a little bit lazy. I recently said that in my review of Foo Fighters' uh, newest album as well. The chanting is just a little bit incessant. It's, it's a little bit more annoying than it is therapeutic and healing. Maybe I'm just not a fan of chanting. That could just be a me thing. But I was just hoping that from the long nature of the intro, the song might actually go somewhere, might climax, but it, it never really seems to. It just teases you along, and it's just really happy to be anchored to its central chant. And it's got a guitar solo. I mean, it's, it's, it's okay. It's, it's a good Jewish guitar solo. But the chant does feel a little bit out of place. It's about seven minutes long across these two songs, and uh, it, it, ain't, it ain't born in winter in terms of a slower atmospheric Gojira song. It's not, not, not at all for me, no. Despite that misstep in the middle, Fortitude is quite a consistent album, tonally and, and quality-wise. I mean, there's other things I don't like about it. There's some little parts like Hold On's a cappella intro about grinding, <laughs> which he is really cheesy, and it just imagine it just makes me imagine Joe kind of grinding on Wow. Okay, here comes the dopamine rush, and it's gone. And on with the grind. I mean, the rest of the song makes up for that cheesy start, but but whatever. And Into the Storm, um, I think that was a single, though I haven't really been keeping up. They, they seem to have released half the album as singles, to be honest. That song leaves me cold. It feels just a little itchy, little metal quarry in the chorus, maybe? It's, it's at least closer to, to mainstream metal, and it's a bit less obviously and identifiably Gojira. I actually quite find it quite hard to identify what I don't like about that one, so I, I guess I should probably just stop talking about it. But yeah, Fortitude. So Gojira, I think, have successfully expanded their sound here and moved forward with an album that I think is going to stand the test of time a lot better than Magma has. The chant may be the divisive Marmite Magma moment, but I think this will be regarded as a successful blend of Gojira's past heaviness and modern melody. I saw one Facebook commenter put it quite nicely, that if Magma was Gojira's The Hunter, in reference to the Mastodon album, then this is Gojira's Once More Around the Sun. And yeah, maybe it is, even though the cover looks a hell of a lot like Emperor of Sand. So yeah, Fortitude, Fortitude good. Thank you so much for watching. Um, comment, rate, subscribe, click the bell icon so that you're notified to when I upload. Uh, I know I haven't been uploading that much recently, I've been very busy, I've moved, you probably can't tell, but this is technically a slightly different setup. <laughs> um, so yeah, this videos are going to be at a slow pace for probably quite a while now while I keep working on my masters. But uh, yeah, there's definitely more stuff coming down the line. So uh, keep tuned, and uh, as always, long live rock and roll.